All right, hey everyone, my name is Kai and I'm going to be the host of this webinar today, this uh, fun webinar. We're going to be talking about the character creation pipeline from Photoshop into Crazy Talk Animator 3, how to bring a character into uh, cra uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3 from Photoshop using the PSD files. And uh, we have a number of tutorials online about this kind of similar process. Um, so if you want to kind of review that, you can check out those tutorials online. I'll show you where those are in just a moment. Uh, we're also going to be providing you a link to this webinar. So we're recording this webinar. If there's something that we uh, miss or that you want to uh, go back and check again, we're going to be recording this webinar so you can uh, review it on your at your own pace uh, later on. In addition, we're also going to be sending out a uh, gift certificate for the content store for $10. The caveat is that you need to uh, provide us with a, uh, we're going to be sending out a survey to you guys and we want to uh, uh, get your perspectives and your thoughts on uh, the webinars, any suggestions for future webinars and stuff like that. So uh, your uh, feedback is really valuable to us. So uh, make sure you fill out that survey, a little simple survey, and uh, send it back to us and you get a $10 gift certificate for the content store. And we're also going to be providing a free PSD file um, of the character that I'm creating, the character that I currently have on the screen, actually. This character is going to be uh, provided to you in uh, PSD format. And uh, you can, if you have the pipeline version of Crazy Talk Animator 3, then you'll be able to uh, import him in and use him to your heart's desire uh, in your own little projects there. All right, so uh, as always, uh, we're, we're also going to have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. So if you have any questions, um, there's a question section in your GoToWebinar uh, window there. And uh, feel free to put in any questions you have there. We're going to have a 10-20 uh, minute Q&A session at the end of this webinar. Depends on how... Uh, how quick we go here. Um, we have a little bit to go through. I'm going to be skipping a lot of uh, steps here, and I'll show, I'll show you why in just a moment. But uh, we'll try and get to, uh, you know uh, under 50 minutes here, so we have a bit more time for Q&A at the end. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for everyone for attending. Uh, hopefully, you learn a lot in this webinar. And uh, let's let's get underway here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into uh, Photoshop first. But before I do that. Um, this is the character on the screen, like I mentioned, that we're going to be uh, creating in this webinar. So let's go ahead and play back. <laughs> let's party! All right, so these are just two uh, stock perform motions uh, from the uh, from the animation uh, content manager, uh, the content library here. And uh, we're going to just uh, be showing you how to uh, kind of create this character, import those animations, and do a little bit of animation at the end of this webinar as well. So we're not going to be focusing entirely on the character creation uh, process, although that is the main thing we're going to be focusing on. I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, basics of the animation tools later on in Crazy Talk Animator 3. So uh, to do this, uh, just as a pre-preface uh, here, uh, to achieve this uh, process that we're going to be covering in this webinar, you need to have the pipeline version of Crazy Talk Animator 3. So the pipeline version, there's a lot of features that allow you to, uh, there's a lot of features that you don't get in the other versions including this feature where you can import in a PSD file of your character with a PSD template. If you want to uh, find out, you know, which version does what, you can just kind of Google it. Just go into like, uh, you know, Crazy Talk Animator Edition Comparison normally brings up uh, the correct uh, um, web page. It should anyways. <laughs> or else you can just go here to uh, Overview and then there's a Edition Comparison here. All right, depends on where you are in the world. So if you want to find out what edition does what and which one you have, just check out this uh, edition comparison. Okay, You can find out uh, which version does what. The pipeline version is the one we're going to be using here, like I mentioned. All right, and so once you have the pipeline version, what you need to do to find this template is you need to log into your uh, Reillusion account. So here I'm on the Reillusion homepage. If you want to log in, just go up to my account on the top. I've, I've logged in as myself here. And if you want to download this, just go to my account. And in my account, you should, under uh, registration, I believe, you have a Crazy Talk Animator. And there is a uh, patch bonus. Uh, you'll see Crazy Talk Animator 3. And there's a patch bonus. Uh, you can just click on that. And under here, you'll find the character, uh, Crazy Talk, not character, uh, Crazy Talk Animator G3 Pipeline PSD template. And you can just download it from here. And there's a whole bunch of other uh, templates you can download as well, depending on which version you have. So just go ahead and click download, and it'll download uh, in about 73 megabytes. I've already downloaded it and everything like that, so I just want to show you there. And that's where you find this uh, PSD template that we're going to be dealing with in this webinar. And you can also go to the Developer Center, which is developer at re or developer.reillusion.com here. 
And in the developer center, you, you'll find the white paper. Okay, so if you want to get into the documentation aspect of this, you can go into a resource and Crazy Talk Animator. All right, and down at the bottom, you'll find uh, just a bunch of feature comparisons between G2 and G3 characters here. And then at the bottom, uh, close to here, you'll find a G3 characters uh, directly from PSD files white paper. You can click that. It'll open up a PDF that you can save. Let me just uh, minimize my GoToWebinar panel there. All right. And, uh, yeah, so here's uh, the white paper. You can take a look at the table of contents here. All the stuff it talks about, the facial features, the structure, and everything like that. So, I mean, if you're not a visual uh, video learner, if you want to, like, you know, just run through the documentation yourself, you can also download this white paper. This white paper is available to, uh, to all users, so you don't have to have the pipeline version. Um, but this, it's really not of much use to you if you don't have the pipeline version, so make sure you uh, get that. Um, and, all right, so... You can, you know, scroll through this on your own time. We're not going to worry too much about it. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of uh, today's webinar here. We'll just close that white paper down. And that's pretty much all I want to show you. Uh, in addition, one more thing here. If you go to the Reillusion uh, YouTube uh, channel here, youtube.com slash user slash Reillusion, you can check on playlists. And under playlists, you'll find uh, a playlist for Crazy Talk Animator 3 tutorials. You click on that, and you'll find the... 3.1 pipeline tutorials um, that my good buddy Anuk has done, and he has uh, provided you know separate videos for each aspect of the webinar that we're going to be covering today. So if you want to kind of go through these in a separate uh, you know uh, library type fashion, you can uh, you can do that on your own time. Um, but what we're going to be doing in this webinar is we're going to be kind of combining that, aggregating that all into one single webinar here, because so, we have a bit more time. Um, each of these videos is about 10 minutes long, but uh, we're going to be uh, you know walking through the process. Uh, basically from start to finish. So once you've downloaded that uh, template, uh, we can just go ahead and let's save this to my desktop here. I have a separate folder here. Um, I've already downloaded it, as you can see here. Let me just replace it. So you'll have this uh, G3 Pipeline PSD template sample. Just uh, unzip it, and you'll get this folder right here. And in resource folder, or resource pack rather, you'll find a calibration motion, which is for your hand poses. We're not going to worry about that too much in this webinar. We can discuss it later if you have any questions. And we have templates here. So here we have a bunch of templates. Let's take a look at what these templates are. First of all, there's, it's supposed to be human. It says Huam, talking head template right there. Okay, uh, human front full template. This is the one we're going to be working with in this webinar here. So if we load that up, you'll see a, a picture of a Gary Pie character. And and uh, you'll see all of this stuff, all the folders over here. We're going to be kind of deconstructing all this folder stuff later on. Um, and there's also a side template, human side full template. Uh, or Sorry, this one's a simple template, not side template. So the, generally the uh, simple template right here, the full template is supposed to look like this. And I think in your, your download it should be like this. But if it's not, uh, you can just email me and I can send out this uh, PSD template to you guys there as well. Um, this one should have uh, facial uh, bones on it. And you can see this is the simple template that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be basically just replacing, um, we're going to be importing in our own PSD into this template and then importing that into Crazy Talk Animator 3. All right, so then there's a bunch of other ones. There's a quadruped template for uh, dogs and stuff like that. Uh, we might have a future webinar on that. I'm not sure, but uh, if you're interested in learning about how to create uh, you know, quadrupeds and stuff, we can definitely explore that. If we uh, open that up, you can see that uh, it's a little bit more complicated. There's uh, some more some more bones to deal with and everything like that. But, uh, um, you know, if you uh, deconstruct it, it's actually not too bad. And there's wing template and spine template as well. Okay. And PSD image resources. So here you have image resources. And this one here is for all the content that we already have in Crazy Talk Animator 3. So like the animals, we have a cat. You'll see the cat right here. <laughs> it looks pretty basic. Uh, whoops, why have the eraser on there? Uh, oops, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you can see the cat, and there's a bit, the basic, uh, you know, layers over here. You can remove different parts of the cat's body. These are just uh, references. Uh, these are not actual uh, templates uh, in this folder here. Uh, in the PSD image resources, they're not uh, templates. They're actually just uh, samples. So if you go to human, you'll find the Elastic Folks uh, front, this dude right here. Okay. You can see just the basic... Uh, um, sprites here on the side and there's a folder for right hand and a folder for left hand as well. Uh, we also have uh, 
reference image for hand gestures. So when you're creating your own hand gestures, use this uh, image right here as a reference for your hand gestures, okay? So you only have to create them for one side because you can mirror them on the other side. There's like relaxed, you know, peace sign, pointing, uh, okay sign and everything like that. Um, so you have to create, to, to get, you know, the full, the full, take full advantage of all the hand gestures, you have to create this library just once. It's not too difficult. Um, and there's also a high-res talking head. Now there's a tutorial that goes into this more detail. We're not going to talk much about the high-res talking head. If you have questions in the question uh, Q&A session, we can answer them uh, during that time as well. Um, and then here's the eyes. So when you're creating your eyes, you have to create eyes like this, open, uh, closed, like relaxed, closed, and then tight, closed, and then angry, and then wide. So you have to create these eyes, basically. I mean, they can be the same. You can just mirror them as well, just like the hand gestures. And then this is just a re another reference here, human sketch front. So same thing, same thing as the Elastic Folk uh, guy here, just a different type of character. So these are just for your references. This is what, what you need to create um, yourself in Photoshop before you import it into the template, into the Photoshop template. And that's what we're going to get into talking about next. So make sure you have this. Make sure that you have stuff on different layers, like the right hand on a different layer, the right arm on a different layer, uh, left foot. Make sure that you create the arms, the hands, the feet, and the legs, and the torso, and the head all on separate layers. And the face, that goes without saying as well. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just load in my own custom uh, character that... Uh, uh, actually, someone at the office has created, not myself. I'm just kind of stealing it for uh, for demo purposes here. Um, but, uh, okay, so after that, we have the sample projects here as well. Um, and these are just uh, basically the same thing here. Uh, these are just the characters. Once they've been, once you've created them, these sample projects here, sample project human, this is the Elastic Folk front. Uh, if I go to front simple, this is the Elastic Folk with all of the sprites imported into the template. So if you see the elastic folk over here, or the uh, template over here, you'll see we have all these folders, but there's like nothing in them, okay? So if I open them up, there's nothing in them. However, if we go to elastic, uh, this one, we have the same folders, but now we have sprites inside of them, okay? So what you need to do is you basically need to import all of those layers, uh, which are basically sprites in Crazy Talk Animator, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. You gotta import them all into the template, all right? So let's close these all for now, and we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to show you the process, a simple process, and then we can explore more about the eyes and, and more complicated stuff like that. So, okay, and there's compound prop. We're not going to talk about that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for the uh, template. That's what you're going to get, and uh, hopefully I explain that uh, clear. If you, don't, if you have any more questions, just uh, feel free to uh, ask me in the Q&A session, or you can review this at a later date. Okay, so I'm going to go into my tutorial PSD files. And I'm going to load in my 10-layer boy that I have here. You can see we have the head, we have the right foot, uh, right thigh. Basically, all these items here, I put them, I've drawn them, and I put them on separate layers. Okay. So this is the character that I'm going to import into my template. So what we need to do is find our template, which is, I believe, official templates. There we go. Okay. So human front. You should have this uh, file right here. Okay. So this is the one I showed you, but this one actually has uh, facial sprites as well. So if you want to have a character with uh, facial sprites like eyes and, and mouth and everything like that to be animated, then you need to load in this humanfront.psd. If, if you don't care about the facial sprites and everything like that, you can just load in the human simple front, which is the one we loaded before, okay? or human front simple rather. And notice that this one, there's no folder called RL talking head on the right. However, this one, we have a folder for talking head, and that's where all your head sprites will go, and you can, you know, get into a lot of detail on that, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Okay, but let's get to, let's get to work on replacing all these uh, sprites here, because that's what we need to show. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, go ahead, we're going to cancel this uh, simple one right now. We can use either one, it doesn't really matter. But what you want to do is, essentially, I'm going to just click and drag this out a little bit, so we can look at them side by side. What you want to do is you want to take all these sprites, and place them, or all these layers rather, I call them sprites or layers interchangeably, uh, take these and replace them, place them into the folders of your template. And which folder? You don't need to worry about the RL bone label uh, folder right here. This is just the bone labels. So if you make all these invisible, it's just the text, okay? You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to modify that. 
Uh, don't worry about that folder pretty much. Um, RL bone human. This we're going to talk about in a, in a moment. This is the actual bones uh, where you're going to um, your characters, you know, hands and, and elbows and stuff will rotate. So this is important. We need to replace those later. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to replace all the images. Okay. So like I mentioned before, there's no images in all these folders. This image that we have on the screen, the white uh, character right now, uh, the white stick man or whatever he is, you can find that under the hip folder. So you can find this right there. Boom. Okay. So it's only under the hip folder. So what we need to do is we actually need to replace, uh, we need to take all these layers from our, our, our uh, source image here, and we need to, I'm just going to shift select them all, and I can just click and drag them into this one right here. But I need to just make sure I'm in the uh, root folder here, so I'm not in any of the folders. And shift select these, and you just click and drag them right into this uh, project right here. And then boom, that's all we're, we're pretty much done. We don't need to worry about this guy over here anymore, uh, this project over here, since we've already imported all those layers into our template uh, PSD. We can just close this one down. And let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to do is you want to place, make sure your character is placed, you want to align the hips, okay? So the hip is, area is right here. You want to make sure this, like, just imagine there's a circle area for the hip, okay? So I'm kind of circling around the hips here. Make sure that hip circular area is aligned with the source image, so right here, okay? And this is basically where you want everything to be. You want it to be aligned like this. Don't worry about the legs being too short or the arms being too short or long or whatever. Those proportions can always be fixed later when we, do, when we deal with the bones. But the first thing you want to do, very simple, you want to take all of these uh, layers right here and you want to place them into the appropriate folder. So there's a folder for each one of these. So we have the head folder. We have the head layer right here. I'm just going to click and drag that into the head folder down here. Where is it? There we go. Head folder. Okay. So then if we open the head folder, there's our head uh, layer right there. And that's exactly what we want. And you'll see now when I do that, now it goes below the bones and everything like that so we can see the bones on top of it. And this is exactly what we want. So let's keep on doing the same thing. Very simple. Right arm. Place into the right arm folder. Right hand. Place into the right hand folder. Now this is a, a, a 10 part character. Um, there's a simple version with, where the hands and the feet are not separate. But I'm just kind of showing you the 10 part because this is the most common one that you'll be using. Uh, I recommend keeping the feet and the hands separate because you can so you can replace the sprites and everything. Uh, okay, so left arm to left arm folder. Let's continue this. Left hand to left hand folder. Hip goes into the hip folder. I think you're kind of getting the point here. And I'm going to skip a couple things later on so we don't have to continually do this. Hopefully you get the process here. Just place the uh, layers into the correct folder. Left foot right here. Right thigh. There we go. And finally, the right foot. Okay, boom. That's really all you need to do um, for your character's images. Now you're pretty much done with that. All you need to do next is align all the, uh, the bone uh, points. Okay? So let's actually make the uh, white character underneath, the white stickman character, invisible. We can actually just delete it. This hip right here, we can just delete that layer since we don't need it anymore. It's just for reference when you bring in your character. So let's delete the layer hip right there. All right. So we're done with the RL image folder. Okay. So we don't need to mess with this anymore. Let's take that up. And let's go down into the RL bone human folder right here. So what we need to do now is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's actually just expand this character. And let's zoom in a little bit. Holding the alt and left mouse button in case you're wondering. And let's get these bones into position. So what I like to do first is I like to go into the hip. Uh, of my character, or the RL image first, and I like to make the hip invisible, okay? That's the torso area, because I want to place these uh, bone these bone points here at the correct position on the arms and the legs first. This is just the way I do it. You can do it however you want, but, uh, you know, the process is still the same. So, again, in the RL bone human, for the left arm, you can see we have left arm, uh, left hand nub, which is at the very end. Uh, let's just make the layers a little bit smaller here. Uh, left hand nub is right over here, left hand right over here, left forearm right over here. So we need to place these in the correct position. So the left arm I'm going to do first. I'm going to just place the left arm. Just imagine the upper part of your arm is a circle. And that's the way you should create your character with a very circular um, upper arm, okay, for the rotation purposes and everything. Just imagine there's a big circle here. You want to place that right in the middle of the circle. So somewhere like that would be fine, okay? 
I'm just kind of eyeballing stuff here. The left forearm needs to be placed at the elbow joint, right in the middle of your uh, of your layer. Left arm, uh, whoops, left hand rather, needs to be placed at the wrist. So again, with your wrist, you should have a, a very circular, uh, rounded out uh, outline like this. And uh, what you want to do is actually place the hand above the wrist, which we can do a little bit later. But this left hand nub, you're going to place that right at the tip of the hand, okay, right at the tip of the fingers, right there. And generally, try and want to align this in a diagonal way, but uh, you know, don't worry if it's a little bit off. Uh, I'm not going to be too picky here. So same same thing with the right arm, okay? So right hand, uh, right arm. We can just kind of place that right here. Try and make it so it's aligned with the one on the left as well, just like that. And right forearm, okay, aligned with the one on the left. Right hand, okay. Uh, there you go. Align it with the other side. There you go. And my microphone just kind of fell over there. Uh, right hand nub. Uh, there you go. Okay, so place that right at the end. Okay. Good enough. We're not going to be too too picky. Okay, so that's the hands, uh, the arms all taken care of. Let's move down to the legs now. So with the legs, very similar process. Let's just go uh, twirl that up. Go to the left thigh. So sorry, the left thigh here. Place that right in the middle again of the rounded off area. Just like that would be fine, I think. And left shank, you can place that at the knee joint. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just kind of follow through here. And then the, the feet get a little bit complicated. So what, I want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift select all the feet items and bring those up together. Now there's left foot and left foot two. Now these points here, uh, the reason there's two of them is because if you have a character like a T-Rex or something, it has like, you know, uh, or a bird has like different joints on the feet. There's one for the first ankle and there's one for the second ankle. I don't really know the scientific term for those kind of feet, but you get the point. If you have like a, you can just imagine you had a T-Rex or whatever. Um, so for a human, we only have one ankle here. So we just place it kind of where the ankle is. Okay, just place them at the same part wherever we think the ankle would be. Somewhere like that is fine. Okay, and then the L toe needs to be, you know, somewhere kind of like, just imagine the, the toe as a circle at the end as well. The L toe nub needs to be at the very end of the toe, just somewhere like that. And the left toe point needs to be kind of at the other end of that circle, if you imagine the toes just kind of being placed right here. Okay, so hopefully that's clear as mud, but uh, just kind of see what I do instead of what I say, I guess. Um, so the same thing with the right thigh. We're going to do the same thing, same process here. Just place that right in the middle. And right shank, at the knee joint, right foot. And all the feet items, bring those up as well. Okay, I'm not going to be too picky. And right toe, we'll place it right there. And right toe nub at the very outside of the toe, right there. Okay, so feet are finished. Now there's also this little kind of reference point down here. And you want to make sure this is up at your, where your character's feet are. And I believe this one can be found in the hip section. Okay, so hip, there's an object pivot. You just want to take this directly up, and you want to make sure that red line is along your character's feet. And you want to make sure it's placed right in the middle, okay? So right here, where it looks like we're pre-aligned, that's where you want to place that object pivot. Okay, and finally, we'll move to the uh, hip. So let's make the hip visible first in the RL image. So there we go. All right, so with this, we want to place the hip bone right in the middle of the hip area. So kind of like right here. Again, imagine the hip is like a big kind of oval uh, lying on its side. Okay, you want to place that kind of right in the middle. Make sure it's aligned uh, top to the bottom as well. You can also use the align tools as well in, in Photoshop. Um, and the torso needs to be kind of where the belly button is. Generally, I place that where the belly button is. Um, maybe about there would be okay. All right, so make sure it's aligned top to bottom as well. The neck, you want to place that bone right at the base of the neck. So uh, I imagine the base of the neck to be about there. And place it right there and the head this needs to be at the top of the neck so behind the behind the actual head itself where the where the neck kind of meets the the head that's where you want to place the head uh, marker there and head nub uh, you need to go ahead and place that at where you think the uh, top of the head is okay so just like the uh, the top base of the toe the head nub goes at the uh, very end of the head okay and that's pretty much all she wrote. So basically right now, we have a completed character that we can import. We can save out as a PSD, and we can import this into Crazy Talk Animator. Let's just go minimize this again. 
All right, so that's all we need to do. Uh, let's go ahead then and save this out as a PSD. Again, I'm not talking about the facial sprites yet. We'll talk about that momentarily, but this is pretty much your basic right here. So let's go ahead and file, uh, save as, and we'll save it as a, uh, to our desktop. Let's just call it uh, Webinar Dude, okay? And save that out and press okay. Now in uh, Crazy Talk Animator, let's just uh, delete our uh, original guy here. Uh, in your stage view, in your stage uh, mode, you need to go to Create G3 Rebone Actor on the left here. All right. So once you do that, let's just load in Webinar Dude, the PSD file for Webinar Dude. Again, you need the uh, PS uh, the uh, PSD pipeline version for this uh, to work. All right. And here we have our character all loaded up. What we need to do is take the left hand and preview just to kind of see the the bones and everything like that. So here's our character all rigged and ready to go. And like rub his stomach just like this. We can uh, hide the bones if we want to kind of get a better look at it. We can move the sprites around this way. Let's preview one more time. Okay, it shows the bones anyways, okay. So, all right, so if you don't want to show the bones, you can just go like this. And if we go into the sprite editor, like I mentioned before, the sprites are pretty much the same thing as the layers in Photoshop. Just imagine the sprites are layers in Photoshop. So left hand, we only have one sprite. The upper arm, we only have one left arm. We only have one hip sprite. We only have one right arm. Because we didn't import in all the other hands and everything like that, all the other facial sprites, we only have one head sprite because we didn't actually import in any of the, uh, the facial sprites, okay? We have, if I try and click on the nose or the eyes, it's not going to select because we did not put any images into those respective folders that I showed you earlier, okay? Uh, one thing we need to do here is you notice that the uh, the hands are kind of below the arms, um, and it kind of looks weird because we have that kind of outline on the arms there. So what you can do is if I zoom in, you can see it a little bit better there. Just go to Layer Manager, and you need to take the right hand layer, just click and drag it above the right arm layer like this, and you'll see it'll be okay over there. And then same thing with the left hand and the left arm, All right, just like this. And boom. All right. So now we have a fully animatable character. We haven't done anything with the facial animation, but we're pretty much good to go. Let's go to stage mode and we can apply any of the animations to them. So the advantage of this is that now your character is compatible with all of iClone's motion tools. So we have uh, right here, we can go to the, uh, we haven't done the face stuff yet. We have the 2D motion key editor. This is kind of the same, the same stuff I just showed you earlier. So you can have your character like this you can you know, rotate his head back and forth, move his head around. Okay, it's using human IK, so if we take our character's hip and kind of move it down, uh, or not the hip rather, take the leg and kind of move it out to the side there, you can see the human IK in action right here, all right? Yeah, bend his leg a little bit more, here we go. All right, so he's kind of doing like a little dance there. All right, but that's how you uh, you can animate, you know, keyframe by keyframe your character. Um, that's kind of cool, but even cooler is you can actually go to your content manager and now you can apply any of those animations that I showed you before. So go to animation. Uh, the one I showed you before was in the perform folder, G3. And we have this uh, thinking. Okay, so we have the character just kind of like doing this. <laughs> and then we have the party one. Let's party! But you can see his, uh, you know, obviously he doesn't have any facial sprites, so his expression is just uh, staying the same. He doesn't have any facial sprites or anything like that. But you can apply any of these animations, you know, go to motions, uh, G3 human, uh, elastic folks, uh, front facing, and do something like idle and talk. You have him squat. You can have him stand back up. Okay, so any of these, like, you know, hundreds of motions in the library you can now apply to your character. So it's really simple. Uh, you can basically do that process with just the just the body in like, I don't know, five minutes or something if you're not trying to explain it. Um, yeah, very simple and easy to do. So let's take a look at more advanced options here, advanced characters. Uh, so let's go back into Photoshop here. Here's our, our basic character. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of uh, uh, templates that I have pre-prepared, uh, pre I guess. Is that even a word? Let's hope so. All right. So anyways, PSD files. Um, Here's a couple of templates that I've already prepared. Okay, so uh, the first one I'm going to show you here is uh, PSD Actor 4. Okay, these are different steps. And you can see this character here. Is, let's just bring that out. Let's just close down the uh, webinar dude for now. So PSD Actor 4 is basically uh, exactly what I had before, except no facial sprites. So 
let's go ahead into this one here. And this one, we have two layers for head and face, actually. So under RL talking head, this is what I mentioned before, we don't need to worry about RL image because all those body sprites or all those body layers have already been imported in. But under RL talking head, we have a face and we have a head right here. If we make the head invisible, let's actually make the bones invisible as well. Oops, the bone labels rather. There we go, and the bones. Okay, so let's zoom in on our character's uh, head here. And the, oops, I actually accidentally made a little copy there of my layer. Okay, so the head layer, the face layer has all the facial sprites on it, okay? So the head layer just has a basic head. Um, and like I mentioned, we want to put the eyes, the nose, and everything like that. We need them on separate layers. So we need to import in those separately. So to do that, I have a, uh, an image where I have all of the uh, head elements saved into a single high resolution image here, okay? So if we look at this image over here, there's our blank face right there, and we have all the mouth sprites. You wanna make sure the mouth sprites are kind of surrounded by a color, the same color as your, uh, as your head, and the eyes and, and uh, like that. So I, I showed you the, the, the reference image before for the irises. So we have the regular, um, you know, happy, uh, closed, relaxed. This is the closed tight. This one is the uh, angry, and this one is the uh, just the surprised or whatever. And here's the nose, and these are the two eyebrows. So, but, you know, pretty basic stuff. And this is the most basic. Um, we will not talk about characters with white irises or anything like that at this at this point. Uh, we can explore that in later tutorials. But uh, what you need to do now is in your uh, um, template image, okay, so this is the template folders right here, you need to import in all those mouths into the correct folders, and I'll show you where to place those. So under head image, under mouth, you'll see under mouth we have a whole bunch of different subfolders here. So we have the normal mouth, the smile open, the pucker lips, and everything like that. Let's go over here and find out which one is which. So what I want to do is import in my normal mouth first, okay? So let's go to over here, and under mouth, I have a normal mouth right here. And this is the one I'm talking about right here. This is just a normal mouth. You can see it on the bottom left there. So what I need to do is just uh, click and drag that into my other image, okay? Since I've already opened the normal folder in this image, okay, just go ahead and click and drag this normal mouth onto my source image, okay, right here. You can see it's a little bit large. If it's a little bit large for your source image, um, because they are high resolution images, you can just press Control T and transform it, hold Shift and kind of scale it uniformly down like this. And the reason it was so large is because it's meant for the uh, high resolution uh, facial um, setup, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. Uh, but you can just place the mouth wherever you want. Okay, so mouth is done. At least the normal mouth is done. You can place that into the normal folder there. Okay, and there's a uh, smile open, for example. There should be like, uh, let's do the woo one actually, okay? So the, the these ones right here, ah, oh, e, oo, all those ones, those are used for like automatic lip sync for your character. Um, so what you need to do is go over here. Let's find the woo one. Okay, this woo one right here. There's the woo uh, facial layer. Let's just click and drag that woo over here. And again, we can just control T, transform that, and whoops, shift, scale it down. Just kind of place it right over here. And you can align all these layers. I recommend what you do afterwards is just align them all so they're all in the same position. I'm kind of eyeballing it right here. But I'm just kind of doing a quick process here. We can make that normal and visible. Uh, press enter first. All right, so if we make the normal layer invisible, there's our ooh. Okay, so boom, that's uh, pretty much what we're going to be doing. You know, you need to just kind of do that over and over and over again, importing all of those mouth shapes into the, into the proper folders. And the same thing goes with the eyes. Okay, so under, under left eye, there's normal, there's smile close, there's eye close, scare close. So again, you're going to import in these separate irises into those separate folders for the eye as well. Okay, so the eye, uh, the eye squint, for example, that'll be the, the anger closed. Uh, sorry, the eye squint is this one right here. The scared closed is this one right here. The regular eye closed is this one right here. Okay, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of just see which one is which. And you'll have those uh, respective folders in here as well. So under left eye, 
what you want to do is just take the left eye uh, normal, so left eye normal, bring it over here onto your character. Again, control T. Normally you wouldn't have to uh, control T and transform this, but I accidentally opened the project for the uh, high resolution head instead, but uh, you know, basically the same process. All right, and just place it where you want. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. And uh, another way you can do it as well is if you take the melds, for example, uh, maybe a faster way to do it so you don't have to align them all is uh, let's take the melds, all the melds, for example. So hold shift and select all the melds right here. And just go up here to align. You can align to the top and then align to the left. And then what you can do is you can take all of those and you can just import them in the melt main folder. Okay, like this. And place them where you want. Control T them. You know, uh, and kind of place them in the position. And you can align them that way as well, you know, just align them all. You probably want to align them to the center, actually, in this case. So press Enter, and then you probably want to align them to the center right here, not to the horizontal centers. There you go. Some vertical centers. That's better. And then place them all right here. That's probably a faster way, actually. I probably should have showed you that first. But, uh, and then you take these into the respective mouth folders, okay? So the normal goes into the normal. Smile open goes into this mouth open, or smile open, just like this. Okay, pucker lip goes into, uh, where is it here? It's further down. Uh, oh, pucker lip right there, okay. Okay, so, but, you know, so on and so forth, and you just do that, and uh, basically what you'll have is I'm going to load in a character now, that's uh, loading a project now where I've actually completed all that since we don't want to follow me doing that for the next 10 minutes. Um, so let's close down this project. We don't need that either. And the project I have where everything's completed is this PSD Actor 6. All right. So here, like I mentioned again, whoops, I have already accomplished all this. So let's zoom in on the character's head. Let's take a look at the RL Talking Head folder under Head Image. You'll see under right eye, Normal, we have Iris right here, Iris Normal. Okay. Under Smile Close, Iris, we have this one. So don't worry about the eye white and the, and the mask folders right now. If you only have an iris, you don't need to worry about the eye white and the mask. That gets a little bit more, more, more complicated when you have your iris and it has to be moving within the eye whites, within the eyeballs. If you don't have an eye white and a mask, then your iris can actually show up outside of your eyeball, which is a little bit strange. Uh, but maybe you want it for your character. But anyways, so that's, another, that's a topic for another webinar anyways. It gets a bit more detailed. But... Uh, yeah, so basically here, everything's placed uh, correctly. And uh, I just wanted to show you for the uh, the bones, the talking head bones. You want to make sure you place those correctly as well. So let's load those up really quickly. Um, the left brow and the right brow, those bones need to be placed at the inner corner of your eyebrows, okay? So once you've imported in all your images, then you need to go to the head bones right here, um, the right brow, for example. This one right here, we need to place it right at the inner edge of the right eyebrow, okay? And then there's left ear and right ear. Those need to be placed right at the kind of border, the curvature between the ear and the head, so like right here, okay? The mouth is pretty self-explanatory. The nose, right on the tip of the nose. That's where you place the nose one. Uh, front hair is um, kind of, uh, I guess, maybe 10% or the 20% of the way down the head in, in most cases. And back hair will be placed right below the head nub. Okay, so this is the correct positioning placing for all the bones for your facial, uh, for, your, for your character's face. All right, so again, like once we've done, once we've imported in all those eyes and, and uh, eyebrows and everything like that, uh, it takes about 5-10 minutes, then we can import in this character into Crazy Talk Animator 3. So we have this character on the screen right now. Uh, what I can do is we can actually go, uh, let's just delete this one for now because I'm going to show you how to update it and then we'll get into the animations. So let's go ahead and create another freebone actor. And let's, uh, where is that folder here? This one. Okay, so I'm going to find that PSD actor 6 right here. And we'll load in that dude. And so now this character has facial animation sprites as well. So if we select the character, go into Sprite Editor, we select the eye, you'll see we have all those eye sprites loaded up. Let's zoom in a little bit first. And for the mouth, 
we have all those mouth sprites loaded in as well. Okay. One thing here, you can see the mouth is actually going above the nose. And so uh, if you want to, you know, fix that issue, just go back into, uh, oh, we are in composer mode here. So just go into the layer manager and take the nose. Where is my nose here? Oh, there it is. Take the nose and just click and drag it above the mouth. Okay. So if you have a character that has a big mouth, generally you want your nose to be above the mouth. So just take that layer and move it up like that. Okay. And here's all the sprites in the layer manager and so on and so forth. So what we can do now is we can go into back into stage mode and let's animate this guy's face. Okay. So we, I showed you body animation before. Now we can animate the face. So let's go into the facial key editor. In the face key editor, you can do things like uh, um, morph. Uh, you can use a template, like a happy template right here. Um, you can see all these expressions changing. I like to kind of blend these templates together. You know, you can you know, just use these ones right here. This is a really cool, uh, easy way to animate your character. Let's go ahead and just uh, use a, just a neutral template for now. And I'm just going to right click on my character, move on an animation, just so we can start from the beginning. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to actually have him say something. So let's go ahead and go into the create a script. Uh, you can record your voice, text to speech, wave file. I'm just going to go ahead and use a text to speech. I just want to make it kind of sound like an Android, I guess. And we'll say, hey, everyone, welcome. Welcome to today's webinar. Okay. He's going to say it. Hey, everyone, welcome to today's webinar in the most uninspired way possible, but uh, let's give him a smile. Let's make him like a, kind of a Android smile, I guess. Okay, so the way we can uh, we can animate, first of all, I showed you the motion key editor. Let's talk about the uh, facial puppet tool. So the facial puppet tool is where you can kind of click and drag your mouse to create facial expressions. If I preview, press space to preview, you can see like this, we can move our mouse around the scene and we can animate our character this way. Okay, we can do this in real time. And there's uh, control templates you can use down here, so a smiley one. All right, and this one here is like a angry one. So you can see he's a bit angry right there. And this one's sad. Okay, so you can just, you know, control these with your mouse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a smiley template here. I'll go and just press record. And hey, everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Okay, so basically I just did like a quick animation right there. And his mouth didn't move, but uh, if we play back. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Okay. You can have that uh, kind of expression right there. Just kind of a nice, very easy two-second animation of a smiling uh, introduction right there. Now, one thing I've purposely left out on this project here is if I go ahead and preview one more time and I click my mouse button, notice that the left or his right eye, there's kind of an issue right there. And the reason I want to show you this is because maybe you forgot something in your in your uh, development process. You need to update it. So you need to kind of get rid of that uh, that red mark right there on our character's eyes. Um, the way we can do that is let's go back into the Photoshop. So we open up that same project. And let's uh, make the uh, bones invisible again there. So we had a problem with the character's right eye. So let's go into the head image right here and right eye. And it was the eye closed that we had the problem with. So right here, oops, need to make sure we select the um, eye close right here. Should be moving that iris around. Not sure why it's not. Oh, under normal. Okay, so yeah, we need to uh, make the normal invisible. See, even I get confused at this time uh, sometimes. And let's make the eye closed visible. Okay, so when we open the eye close, make the eye closed visible, uh, we did move that actually. So we need to go to uh, eye close and, whoops, accidentally move that. I didn't realize which layer I was on. So let's just place it right there. Okay, so say for example, I wanted to get rid of this red thing. Actually, this red mark here is actually in the mask or in the eye white section. So if we move that around, you can see this is the section that's it's defined for the eye white. And we don't want this. We can actually just, you know, delete that layer if we want. Uh, we can erase it. We can go up to use the erase tool. That's the erase tool. And, you know, blah, 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 just get rid of it. Okay. Um, or we can even delete the layer, but I'll just uh, erase it for now. We need to make sure that's all right. Okay. And then just go ahead and uh, make that stuff invisible again. 
and then just make the uh, normal iris visible. All right. All right. So then we can just go ahead and save that out. So we fixed that, and you know we don't want to import in the whole thing again. So we can just save this out as a you know PSD actor fix. I've already done this previously, as you can see. Press OK. And the other way you can update your character is you can go over here to the composer mode. And there's also a way you can import in PSD assets. So if you wanted to update your character, um, we can update, you know, the hand sprites, the, the facial sprites and everything like that. If we want to import in those, uh, add some stuff to our character, then this is the way we do it. Just go to import PSD assets and we're going to just go to the PSD actor fixed right here. And we didn't change any bone settings. We didn't change any sprite transform. We didn't change any layer orders or subdivision or anything. So we don't need to select all these. Let's go to partial update and select next. And the only thing we updated was the character's head, the talking head section. So we go to talking head, press OK. And that should load up momentarily. The update is successful. Awesome. So then we go into our uh, stage mode here. Now if we have our character blink, let's go into the facial puppet here again. Now you'll see that, uh, whoops, we accidentally, oh, I did make that uh, eye invisible. <laughs> okay, so generally you're not supposed to make the eye invisible in Photoshop uh, right here. Okay, um, yes. So that iris should be okay. And then we'll just go ahead and save that again. And update it. Oops, we need to go into... Uh, the composer mode. And here we go. Partial update. All right, now our character should be complete with the, uh, the blinking eye. So that's how you kind of update your, uh, your character. Now, finally, what we're going to talk about is the, uh, just the, some, a little bit of more animation stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about the the morphs and the templates. So I kind of showed you how to do a quick animation using the uh, facial puppet tool. What I'm going to show you now is how to animate using the uh, the keyframe editing for the face and also sprite editing, because uh, those are two kind of really cool ways that you can edit your character's face. We have about five more minutes to go, so I'll just show you some quick uh, options for uh, facial animation on your character. Okay, so what I do first is let's just go ahead, right click, and um, no, let's go into the timeline first, and we'll go to face, and the facial puppet tool will create a clip in the facial clip uh, track right here. So you just want to delete that. We're going to start from hey. scratch. Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Okay, so now we're going to do the animation using the um, facial key editor down here. So let's start off with a happy expression, okay? And hey everyone, hey everyone, let's give them a happier expression. And you can see it's creating a clip here. It's just going to basically blend from expression to expression. Um, if you want to see the keyframes, you can just go down here, open up the facial clip, and you can see the face uh, track right here. And we can just place that again. So from here to here, he's going to remain happy. And then here, we'll give him kind of an even happier expression. So you can see from here to here, it blends. If I zoom in on the face a little bit more, you can probably see that. So from here... Well, 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 we're blending from expression to expression. So this is kind of what I like to do. This is a really easy way to, like, you know, kind of a lazy man's way, I guess, to animate stuff. Um, this one looks, looks a little bit more angry. Okay. So, I mean, just to add some stuff like this. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Okay. And you can blend those together. And maybe after he's Web finished webinar. talking, we're going to just do some manual sprite switching. Okay. So we've blended these together. And let's talk a little bit about sprite switching. So we can go to the sprite editor right now. And at this point, what we need to do is we can change the facial sprites. So after he's finished talking, we can change his irises to like happy irises like this. Okay? Just like his eyes. And then change his mouth to a nice smile like that. Okay? Let me take the eyebrows. Um, the eyebrows we'd have to do, uh, because there's only one eyebrow, we'd have to do the transform change for the eyebrows. But you can see that these tracks open up here, the right eye sprite, the mouth, 
and the browse spray, they all open up once I open them in the spray editor. Okay, so you can see the spray change from here to here. Okay, so everything else is the same. From here to here, we still have that transition from one uh, expression to the next. And then here, it just, boom, just change the expression like this. Webinar. Okay, and because he says webinar, we have his mouth open still. So we want to click and drag that mouth sprite, uh, change rather, from here to after he's finished talking. Okay. So just keep in mind that the sprite uh, editor, the sprite changes on your character space, those will override everything else. So what you want to do is um, save your sprite editing for your facial animation to the very end, because um, that's where you, you're going to have like the modifications at the very end. Um, all the, the transform and everything, uh, we can do that manually. So let's, I'll show you the eyebrow really quickly here, and then we'll end off the webinar. Um, so if we go to the face key editor again, uh, I showed you the transform right here. So let's take a look at the eyebrows from here. Let's just uh, move that eyebrow ever so slightly. And that's going to create a uh, transform uh, key for our eyebrow. If we close down that track here, your facial clip, you'll find uh, an eyebrow. Should be there somewhere. Okay, anyways. So we just created a, a, a keyframe for the eyebrow. And then from there to here, uh, let's do this one as well. So from here to here, and then from here to here, we're going to raise both those eyebrows like this. Okay? So now we have well, them raised like this. Well, and should be opening the transform track automatically for the eyebrow. Uh, anyways, so let's go back here and press reset. Reset that sprite. And we can select the right eyebrow and reset it. And that will reset it back to what it originally was. Okay. So then we have this eyebrow raise like this. Welcome to today's webinar. Okay. And that's just an example of, you know, some really quick facial animation. And on top of that, just to kind of top it off, let's just add some head motion. So we'll go to the uh, facial puppet tool. I'm going to press this uh, button right here, which clears everything. And I'm only going to move the head and rotate the head. So... We're going to keep all the same animation, but we're just going to kind of move the head around a little bit like this. Let's go ahead and record that. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Okay. And so now we have the head animation layer on top of that. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. All right. Cool. All right. So that's basically all she wrote. That's a uh, you know, quick uh, overview of the uh, facial animation tools in Crazy Talk Animator. Um, so what we're going to do now is for the last 10 minutes or so, we're going to open it up to Q&A. If you have any questions about CTE3, the process that we went through, um, or anything else, I kind of missed the, the hand stuff. If you're interested in the hand gestures, I can go through those as well. But they, they are covered in the, uh, in the white paper. Um, quickly for the hands, if I wanted to show you guys where the hands are, um, those are in RL image right here, and you'll find right hand. And basically what you want to do is you want to kind of take all those hand gestures. Um, oops, let's just load it from my folder here. It's easier to access. Just one quick final thing we're going to talk about is the hands here. So the hands, they should be found, oh, hand elements, head elements. Should have a hand, oh, facial and hand. Okay, here we go. All right, so all these hand uh, props right, or sprites right here, rather, or layers, I guess. So they're all in this hand folder. Okay, so if I just select all these, shift select, you can see there's 29 of them. What you want to do is um, you want to align these to the top and align them to the left. And so they're all in this position right here. And then you want to go into the hand folder and you want to import those in just like I showed you before. So if we, uh, you know, delete all these for the right hand that we currently have, and I also want to mention as well, there's like a boxing glove, a like separate sprite that I imported in here. So this boxing glove, we make it visible on the right hand, not this one. Okay, so that's a custom sprite that we just added in there as well. And you can add that into your custom sprite library. I'll show you where that is in uh, just a moment here. So take all these hand sprites and I'm going to click and drag them oops, into our character right over here. 
All right, and then you can just flip them. Uh, I'll close it down now. So if, for the right hand, you want to flip everything. So you go to uh, uh, layer, um, flip, uh, yeah, transform to me menus here. Rotate 180, or flip horizontal rather, and everything's flipped. Place them into position right there, and you're good to go. All right, and then you can just make them all invisible by clicking and dragging. And boom, we replaced all the hand sprites. There you go. Okay, and just make that boxing glove invisible there as well. And then when you import that in, um, I'll show you the boxing glove in Crazy Talk Animator. So Sprite Editor, you'll find the boxing glove in the hands. Should be anyways, there we go, yep. There's our boxing glove. So we can use those boxing glove sprites as well because they're in that same library. All right, just wanted to kind of end up with that. Now we're completely finished. So let's get the Q&A session as, as quick as we can here. Uh, so I'm going to open up the questions panel. And again, make sure that uh, uh, you fill out our survey at the end of the webinar as well. Um, get the $10 certificate. And I'm going to be sending you guys this PSD file uh, that uh, you can kind of test out on your own time. All right, cool. So a lot of introductions here. We had a full house today, so apologies to those of you who weren't able to get in. We had a, a maximum of 101 attendees, 100 attendees rather, and a lot of people were not able to get in. Um, but let's get to your questions here. So, okay, uh, pretty long question here, more like a comment uh, from Wesley talking about his background. Uh, thanks, Wesley. Uh, good to know that you're in interested in, uh, in uh, more animation stuff. Um, now, if you have any questions uh, in addition to what we're discussing in the webinar, you can also email me as well. Uh, my email is kai at reillusion.com, and I can answer your questions on a, on a more personal basis there because we get a lot of questions in the Q&A session. Sometimes we may, may not be able to get to all of them, so if you don't, if we don't get to all of them, just email me, kai at reillusion.com. Okay, so uh, we have a question about uh, from Jim asking, will there, be, will there be a replay? Yes, we're going to be sending you the recorded uh, version of this. Okay, just so you're aware. Um, Wesley asks, is Photoshop a requirement for animating in Crazy Talk 3? Uh, no, you, you don't need uh, Photoshop uh, to animate at all. Um, what we're showing here is the uh, PSD pipeline. So for those of you, the character creators who are more comfortable, you know, creating your character in Photoshop, this just kind of shows you an easy way to get your character into Crazy Talk Animator 3. So you can take advantage of all the motion tools, the motion library, and everything like that. Uh, you can easily, easily create your own character with simple, you know, create your own bone structure if you want. Uh, we have tutorials on that as well. But this is kind of showing you how you can use our bone template, which is compatible with all the motion tools of every, every motion uh, library in Crazy Talk Animator 3. So that's the advantage of the process that I showed today is now you have access to all those motion tools and you know thousands of motions from the library. Okay, so a question from Don asking, uh, how do you animate a PSD character from their back view and three-quarter back view using the same pre-animated moves from Crazy Talk Animator 3? Well, unfortunately with uh, G3 characters, um, if, you're, if, you're not, if you're new to Crazy Talk, we had G2 characters where they could be animated uh, in 3D from every every single direction, which was absolutely awesome. Um, there's, you know, however, those characters were very difficult to create. We have some people that did create them, but they were quite complex to create because you had to create, um, how many angles was there? Gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight angles. So there was like 90 degree angle, there was 180 degree angle, there was 45 degree angle. So you had to create a, uh, the character from each one of those angles and you had to import those in and it was only available via flash. So it was a little bit uh, prohibitive for a lot of people. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with flash or draw plus, um, with these G3 characters, we, we focus on specific angles. So side angles and front angles. Now the crazy talk animator three motion library and the motion tools are compatible with front facing and side facing um, characters. So, let me show you an example here. However, you, you, you can create your own character at like a, you know, 100 and, uh, you can create your own character at a back angle or any angle like that, but you're not going to be able to use these, these uh, motion files. So if we go to G3 Human, you'll notice that there is a uh, front-facing female and like a side-facing female. I'll just use her as an example here. So front-facing female. You can see it has a big F right there on the icon. 
Uh, so that's front facing. The S stands for side facing, right? And those angles will only be compatible with their specified motions. So, oops, what am I doing here? Uh, so if we go to animation tab, G3 human, you'll see that every every motion that we have here, every move motion, it'll be an F or an S. There'll be some S ones as well. Um, maybe not for the move. But uh, so basically, if I try to apply apply this front facing motion to a side facing character, it could work, but you'll notice that like, you know, right here, um, it'll look kind of weird because her feet are kind of, you know, one's facing this way and the other one's facing that way. Um, so, I mean, you can, there's a little bit of overlap, but generally it's supposed to be used for the front facing characters if it has an F right here. So, so you can see this one is a better example like this. Okay. So that foot right there is a lot different from this foot. You can see the, the reason uh, why we have front facing motions for front facing characters. All right. And for a side facing character, maybe it's something like the idle. There should be some S ones. Oh, this is, we have a separate folder. So the separate folder here. Um, for the side facing, um, the what we did was move and the jump. Okay, so do the side facing jump. Uh, so you can do the splits, but uh, I believe there's a side facing jump like that, anyways. All right, and the Superman like fly, for example. If we try to apply the Superman fly to a front facing character, it, I mean it works, but it looks kind of weird. That's all I'm saying. But uh, we have the side facing and front facing motions for G3 characters only. Um, and hopefully that kind of explains things for you there. If you wanted to create your own, you know, character facing at a 45 degree angle away from us, uh, you can do that, but you won't be able to take advantage of these, these this motion library. Okay, um, let's go to the next question. Uh, I see a blue icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, this blue icon right here. Yeah, you probably see this one. This is the GoToWebinar icon. <laughs> Someone just asked about uh, the uh, blue icon down here. That's the go-to webinar icon, in case you're wondering. Uh, okay, so uh, Leonardo mentions that uh, he missed he missed the part where you download the templates. Uh, so you can actually watch the uh, the video again. We'll send you the the video link uh, to watch again. Um, and it'll show you where to download the templates. You can just go into like uh, uh, again the Relusion uh, store, uh, Relusion website rather, and uh, you'll find your uh, Crazy Talk Animator uh, pipeline right here. You need to go to Patch Bonus. Under Patch Bonus, you will have the PSD template down here. Okay, so uh, you can watch that to, again on, on the video. I just kind of want to briefly show you there. Okay, so Daniel asks, is there a video on how to create different sprites for the face and hands? Um, good question, Daniel. So I showed you the boxing glove uh, briefly there. Uh, the boxing glove in this folder right here. All you need to do if I wanted to kind of, you know, create my own sprite, um, let's just go, you know, to whatever folder we want. Um, I'm going to create in the right hand, for example, I can create a new layer. I'm going to create a, like a really stupid kind of, uh, we'll just call this layer two. And let's just, you know, create some random shape. Let's give him like a circle hand filled with blue. Okay. All right. So this will be his, his hand. All right. So if we imported this character, uh, let's go ahead and press enter there. And so basically this, this item right here, uh, we need to rasterize it there and we can import this character. Now, if we go to file, save as, let's call it test, for example. Um, so this is a, this is creating a hand sprite. Okay. It is a very simple process for creating a hand sprite. And, uh, let's, uh, create our own G3 character really quickly again using our uh, PSD actor and then we can update him using the uh, test that we had all right so we don't need to worry about any of this stuff partial update okay and that was the right arm I believe so right hand right arm no right hand press okay so it's gonna update the right hand and we should have that uh, crappy sprite that I just created in the right hand library. But yeah, so he has the the blue the blue uh, circle there, blue oval for his uh, for his right hand. Uh, hopefully, you can do something a little bit better looking than that. But I just wanted to show you the process. Okay, and you can move that around. Okay, you can animate that if you wanted to. 
is doing some magic or something. Anyways, okay, so that's just the process of replacing or adding sprites onto your character. So hopefully that's uh, uh, clear for you there. So uh, Charlie asks, why are there two normal folders in the mouth section? Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, the talking head, head image. Uh, it's easier if you just kind of minimize everything here. So talking head, head image, mouth. There's a normal one. Yeah, it does seem like there's two normal mouths. Uh, I'm not sure why. I think that you need a normal, uh, just place the same the same sprite into both of them. I think the, this one here, I think the first one is supposed to be neutral, and this might be the normal mouth in case they're different. Um, but in general, I would just recommend keeping the same one here and here. I've actually never noticed that myself. Too many folders, but uh, yeah, I think this one is just a neutral. Um, I would just keep them as the, as the same expression either way. Uh, just normal is a neutral expression, okay? Um, I don't want to mess with the template. I don't have time to kind of figure out the difference right now, but uh, maybe you can kind of take a look at that uh, later on. But uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly why. I can't really say, but uh, just keep them the same is all I can really tell you. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. I'm going to skip a couple questions here because we're kind of loaded down. Um Okay, so what is your frames per second in this demo? Another question from Wesley. Um, frames per second can be found up here on the top left uh, of your of your project. So right now it's 121.5, which seems a little bit high, but uh, you know, uh, just play back right there, and you'll see the frames per second uh, up here, up there. I think you can change the setting. I've never really been asked that to be honest. You can probably go to project settings and change. Uh, your uh, frames per second here somewhere. Not quite sure. I've never actually uh, gone into that. Yeah, I'm not sure you can change the frames per second. It's just like when you export. So when you render, like render your video, you can uh, change the video size and everything right here. You can change the frame rate. So if you change, if you select the frame rate right here, you can change that. I'm not sure if you can do that with. Uh, all formats, but uh, you should be able to change this, the frame right here. All right. Um, anyways, we'll move on to something else. Uh, it's kind of off topic there. All right. So, uh, Hafizul asks, where can I find the PSD file of the Scout Boy? We'll, we'll send that PSD file to you guys uh, via email, along with the uh, along with the uh, Survey, yeah, the survey we're going to send. We're going to send the survey, the video link, and the PSD file to you guys, all the attendees, as kind of a, as a, as a freebie for uh, as a thank you for attending. Um, yeah, so I have a comment from Robert mentioning we have a, it's a lot to cover in, in a single hour because we do have the separate tutorials uh, done by Enoch, and you can check those out on the YouTube channel like I showed you before. Um, playlist um, right here, the YouTube playlist. Uh, Reillusion playlists and then Crazy Talk Animator 3. So you can check out these ones as well. This one here is uh, something we, d we didn't cover in this webinar. Uh, high resolution facial features and uh, it's just a little bit more advanced. So you can check that out on your own time. Uh, where did my questions panel go? Okay, so could Crazy Talk Animator 3, Robert also asked, can Crazy Talk Animator 3 animations be done with mocap from iClone 7? Um, well, uh, that's a good question. We are going to be releasing facial mocap with, uh, I believe, iClone 7.1. And I can guarantee you that facial mocap animation for Crazy Talk Animator 3 is not far behind. So that's a, an exciting development. Uh, you know, we can't say, I can't say exactly when that will be coming out, but I'm 90% sure that we'll be incorporating that in the future into Crazy Talk Animator 3 because a lot of the technology between CTA 3 and iClone 7 is, uh, is shared. So uh, maybe not CTA 3, maybe CTA 4 or a future update, but uh, I, I can, you know, pretty, pretty sure I can say that it's going to be available in the future. So that'll be kind of cool. Uh, facial animation, real-time facial animation for, uh, for 2D characters using facial mocap. Okay, so um, so, question from Jose Louis asking, Photoshop character creation for G2 characters is similar to the one of G3. 
No, G G2 is, is a bit more complicated. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can just search for uh, like G2 character creation, I imagine. Um, G2 character creation or something like that. Um, and you can find, uh, yeah, here you go. Character creation with a GT G3 template right here. So this is a very simple process in Crazy Talk Animator. This is this this uh, tutorial here covers importing the uh, sprites separately in Crazy Talk Animator. So this is like the slower version of what we just covered today. Uh, this tutorial right here, character creation with G3 template. But uh, yeah, this one here, basic character creation in Flash. So you can see it's from three years ago. A little bit more complicated, multi-character creation in Flash. These ones right here, just, just type in that. You'll be able to find it in, in YouTube, no problem. Um, the process is quite a bit different. Not available in Photoshop, but you need to use uh, Flash for that. So it's a little bit outdated. Um, we're trying to kind of get away from that as well. Okay. Um, so uh, Robert asking, Robert's asking, are there any iClone or CTA experts in the Seattle area? Uh, who could pay for one-on-one -on -one, uh, in-person tutorials. Um, I, not that I know of. I mean, I'm in Vancouver, uh, but I don't really have a lot of time for one-on-one, uh, uh, -on -one, possibly. I mean, you could, uh, could email me, uh, kai at relusion.com. Um, there's also a few people that I know that would be able to do it over Skype, um, that would be able to do some, like, one-on-one -on -one training over Skype. So if, if anyone out there is interested in, like, one-on-one -on -one training for CTA3 over, over Skype, uh, you can email me, and I can refer you to somebody as well. All right. Um, so Daniel asks, when making a morphed head, can you make keyboard shortcuts for the move, pick, and zoom tools? Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about in Crazy Talk Animator 3, so a morph-based head, I believe. Um, yeah, that process... I don't know if there's a uh, hotkeys. If you want to look up for hotkeys, um, if you want to get get funky with the hotkeys in Crazy Talk Animator 3, you can just go to your help. Um, the, there's a user manual, and in the user manual, there's keyboard shortcuts at the bottom. And you'll find uh, global shortcuts right here, uh, timeline shortcuts. I, I use some of these, to be honest. I use a lot of uh, hotkeys, especially the W, E for rotate and uh, move and everything like that. But, uh, you know, you can explore these on your own time and kind of, you know, uh, use them in your own workflow. All the hotkeys are available right here. All right. And, uh, okay, so Judy asks, would it be legal if I took your little boy and changed the hair torso and shoes to a little girl since you already did all the heavy lifting? Yep, certainly go ahead. This uh, this uh, resource PSD file we're giving you guys is, is free for you to, you know, edit and do whatever you want with and you can use in your own projects. You know, if you do create something cool with uh, Crazy Talk Animator, we, we ask that you kind of, you know, let us know. You can email marketing at reillusion.com and we can, you know, promote your your stuff to the to, to our users or to other people as well. Uh, we always like to showcase a lot of our user stuff um, on our website. So if you, you know, create any sort of game or anything like that or, or uh, animation, we really like to, uh, you know, take a look at the work our users are doing. We often scour YouTube and stuff for it, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's nice if... Uh, People just kind of show us their work. And, uh, yeah, you can email marketing at reillusion.com, I believe, to, to kind of showcase, get your stuff showcased on our website. Um, so John asks, how do you handle props? Props are super easy. If you want to uh, import a prop, basically you just import it in an image, uh, any, any image you can import in uh, to Crazy Talk. Let's just go, like, as an example, you know, uh, cartoon, plane, I don't know something random. What I do if I'm like, you know, if I'm st struggling for content, I just go to like a cartoon plane, for example, in Google search. Um, make sure you go to advanced search, make sure you choose uh, da, 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 da. Oops. Uh, the format file type is PNG because that's transparent background. Okay. And then just go advanced search. And you know, something like uh, this one might be, if you see the checkerboard background, that means it's transparent. I just go to like, you know, Save the image um, to our desktop. And we can click and drag that directly in and import it as a prop. Boom, now we have a prop airplane that can go in the, in the background behind our character's head. So, you know, 30 second process to finding something on Google. Now you have your own prop that you can animate and 
move around like this in uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3. All right, so hopefully that's a you know really quick overview of how to import in props. Really simple. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Okay, so someone asking for my email again. It's kai, K-A-I, at reillusion.com. All right. Mark asks, is Reillusion going to be representing at VidCon this year? Yes, we are at VidCon. Uh, the guy who did the tutorials that I just showed you there, the CTA 3.1 pipeline tutorials, Inuk is going to be there. So you can ask him all your crazy talk animator questions. Uh, VidCon is in Anaheim, if any of you guys want to make the trip. I believe it's this week, this weekend. Um, yeah, and we're also going to be at uh, Seagraph uh, later on in uh, the end of July there as well, if any of you are interested in showing up. I'll be, there, I'll be there at that one, so you can come visit me. Um, and asks, why are the face parts so ugly in the G3 characters compared to the G2 characters? Um, I guess, you know, the parts are as ugly as you make them. Uh, you know, maybe some of our, our G3 characters or the facial parts are very simple. Um, but uh, it's really up to you. Maybe, maybe st our stuff isn't, uh, our G3 characters right now aren't uh, everyone's cup of tea, but uh, that's why we give you the option to make your own, make it, make it better than ours. All right, and a uh, question from uh, Leonardo asking, why do I need the pipeline to use PSDs in this way? Um, basically, uh, that's just the uh, convenience of having the pipeline version. I don't really decide on what features go into what versions, but uh, yeah, pipeline in general, when you're talking about pipeline, it's, it's uh, you know, import-export. Uh, so basically, with even with iClone, anything import-export, uh, you'll, you'll need the pipeline. Import, maybe not, but export to other programs, you need the pipeline. Um, in general. Okay, so ba, 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 ba. okay, let's try and get to uh, probably have about uh, five minutes left of questions, and then again, uh, I apologize, I'm not going to be able to get to all the questions. So you can email me. Um, do, 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 do. So question about uh, yeah, okay, so I answered that question. Another question uh, again with a pipeline question. Uh, <laughs> Do you have any tips or tricks for animating characters with short legs? A question from Jacob. Uh, yeah. Um, again, it really depends on what kind of character you have. If your character is uh, using our bone template, which I just showed you, or not, it's going to be completely different. Um, but, I, you know, look up run cycles, run cycles on YouTube um, for, for that kind of stuff. Um, if you email me, I can kind of give you some references maybe, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I uh, can't really show you at this moment since we're kind of strapped for time. But, uh, okay, so Don asks, do you believe this software can be used for primetime cartoon creation or Cartoon Network Toonami? Absolutely. I mean, there's some really, really simplistic animation out there on like stuff like Adult Swim or Cartoon Network. Uh, you know, some really simplistic stuff. It's really all about the, the, the comedy or, or the, the feeling of your, of your animations. It doesn't have to be tremendous. I've seen some ridiculously simple uh, cartoons on YouTube, whereas the animation is just like nonsense, but they're really funny and entertaining to watch. So it's really more about entertainment value. Um, you can definitely use uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3 to create these, and I think that uh, you know it's all up to your all up to your creative uh, prowess uh, to do it yourself. Um, Terry asks about animated physics simulations, not in Crazy Talk Animator 3, unfortunately. Uh, we can do physics. Uh, simulations in Icon 7, but that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, gets a little bit more complicated. Um, so Rosemary asks, do we have to draw each sprite separately rather than just the completed character? Um, yeah, just make sure that each uh, part of your character's body is on different layers, like I showed before. So the hands, the arms, the torso, uh, the legs, and the feet, and the head need to be on separate layers. And then also all the facial features as well, like the eyes, eyebrows, and everything, those need to be on uh, separate layers. And then import them just like I kind of showed uh, throughout this webinar here. Uh, Bibondar asks, can I use PNG layers from GIMP or iDraw? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's fine as long as they're in uh, a PSD file. If you, if you have to import them into uh, Photoshop. Um, if you don't use Photoshop, you can just uh, import them separately as PNGs as well in the composer mode. All right, and that's the, the, the tutorial I showed you before. Um, this one right here. I'll, uh, I'll place this in the, the URL in the chat window if you guys want. Um, this kind of shows you the way that we had to do it before. There's, there's a chat window. I'm going to just place that URL in the chat window there for you guys. 
you can uh, check it out on your own time. Okay, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so Kagiso asks, are we going to have 3D character creation webinars in the future? Yep, uh, we'll have 3D character creation, not for Crazy Talk Animator 3, but for uh, iClone. We're doing those character creation webinars all the time. Um, for Crazy Talk Animator 3, that might be a while um, at this point. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So Dominique mentions the, the, the process is pretty complex for beginners. Well, I think it's complex because I just showed you like everything all in an hour. But basically, uh, we co we covered almost everything. We covered the main process in the first like ten like five minutes. Uh, just import all those layers into the separate folders, save it as a PST, and import it. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated when you get into the eyes and the eyebrows and everything, which are sorry the eyes and the mouth, which is why I didn't focus too much on that. But because uh, I wanted to kind of try and keep this one simple. Okay, uh, let's do five more minutes and then we're going to really have to kind of cut things off. We have a full house here today, so there's a lot of questions to get to. Um, if I want to animate the hair of a female character when her dress is moving, when she walks, can I do that with a G3 character? Yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, the hair can be separately animated on your character. Um, and I can't, don't have time to cover how to do that in this webinar, but you can do it. Um, you can email me and I'll be able to talk to you about how you can do that. Alfredo, uh, that question was for. Um, yeah, someone mentions that uh, my mailbox is rejecting emails um, because they spelt the reillusion wrong. Reillusion is R-E-A-L-L-U-S-I-O-N. All right, just, just like the website. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so a lot of questions to get through here. Let's try and get to some questions from people I haven't answered yet. Okay, some questions I can't answer, like how much the facial mocap plugin will cost, um, because we haven't. Uh, I'm not in sales, so that's not really my domain, unfortunately. Uh, uh, Lawrence asks a good question. How can I create a 2.5D effect with photos using GTA 3 tutorials? Uh, it's really simple, to be honest. I mean, you can just animate stuff. Um, I can't really show you at this point, unfortunately, but just want to acknowledge that I got your question there, Lawrence, and it's super easy to do that. Uh, tutorials on that. Um, I think we do have some for Crazy Talk Animator 2. I wouldn't be able to find them at this moment. I don't want to go searching through. So maybe just email me later. I can kind of set that up for you. Um, so I mentioned that Gary Pye does online tutoring, I believe. Yeah, Gary Pye, I think, does some online tutoring. Um, a good buddy of mine. He is in Australia. So if you're in Australia, that's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, I think he does online tutoring. I'm not totally sure how much he does, but uh, he's a lot, a lot of the time occupied with character creation and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely awesome guy to, to learn from as well. Um, so Leonardo asks a good question. Would you recommend developing G2 characters for a project or better stay away from that? Now, personally, I've used projects. I've used G2 characters in a number of projects myself. And I think that G2 characters, the good thing about them is that they can, you know, flip angles, like no problem. Like if I bring in a character and see my the, direct, the director or the art director of the project I'm working on says, oh, you know, actually we want to change this to a different angle. We want to have the character coming in from a from a you know a rear angle or something like that. Well, if I bring in like Saul for example, I can just use the uh, bracket keys and I can change his angle just like this. So this is the huge advantage of of G2 characters. Okay. So you can apply an animation, and they can also accept iClone 7 animations as well. So you can import in iClone uh, maybe 6.5, I'm not sure if it's 7 yet, but to any 3D animation you want, you can apply it to this character. Okay, so it can be like a 3D animation. Let's have like a perform, for example, cheering male perform. Okay, so you can see from the front, you can go from this angle. Okay, and you can go from the side angle, whoops. All right, so that's that's the real that's a big, really big convenience for those uh, G2 characters. All right, a uh, couple more questions, and then we're gonna call it call it a day here. 
Um, another person asking if we're going to be at VidCon. Yes, we are. We're going to be at VidCon. Um, all right. <laughs> I think that, uh, yeah, okay, a lot, of the, a lot of the rest of the comments here, or a lot of the rest of the things here are just comments as opposed to questions. So uh, I think we're going to end it off here. So apologies again if I didn't get to your, to your questions, guys. But, uh, you know, we're about 25 minutes over time here. And I have an appointment to, uh, to meet here. So, um, uh, again, thanks so much for attending. Uh, make sure you fill out the survey. We're going to be sending off the, uh, the PSD template for you guys there as well. Get a $10 gift certificate for the content store. And uh, we're going to end off there. Uh, so thanks so much, everyone, for attending. Hopefully you learned a lot. I know we went through, uh, through things pretty fast. But, again, we're going to be sending you the recording as well. So uh, thanks so much to everyone, and we hope to see you at VidCon in Anaheim or Seagraph, uh, uh, I think it's in Los Angeles, uh, later on in July, end of July, early August. And uh, thanks so much for attending, and we're going to end it off there. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are in the world, and see you in the next webinar.